Hi everyone, it's Lini K. Today I will be showing you how to make your own pigments and watercolor paint using things found from the earth. This was a long process due to my own obsession, so Sadie went through cycles of what you doing mom, can I help? to complete and utter disinterest multiple times throughout. So first, you need to get your materials for your pigment making together. Obviously, you will need to go outside. Wander your backyard, find a stream, or go to a park, and remember to be kind to the earth by only taking a little. You really won't need much. The types of earthen things you are looking for are clay, seashells or clams, burnt up wood, and soft rocks. What? I know, basically they're rocks that easily crumble and leave color on your hands. And just as a heads up, sand won't work for the materials that we're using in this video. There are probably more types of things, but those are what I found. Remember to use abiotic things, meaning non-living, because if you use something biotic like leaves or berries, you won't be able to turn it into a dry pigment powder and retain the color. I can talk more about types of ink in another video. Sadie thought she wanted to help, but the allure of eating grass was too strong. My dog Kaya, however, was very excited about this part. She loves streams. Look at her zoomies! She even dug a hole in my parents' backyard to show me the great color of the dirt back there. It was definitely not because she heard a chipmunk in the pipe she destroyed. Some more materials you'll need are a mortar and pestle, and two hard rocks, a big one and a smaller one. If you're just using clay, you probably won't need the hard rocks, but if you're trying to grind up softer rocks, seashells, or clams, I found using the harder rocks worked faster and better in most cases. A couple of notes if you're going with the big rock method. Using a stiff bristle paintbrush helps get the finer particles off of the rocks, but I would recommend using cheap ones or old ones you aren't gonna use anymore. The rocks eat up the bristles. And I know this sounds silly, but wash your rocks off before beginning. Otherwise, battling debris is so much fun. Something to use as a sifter is also needed. As per my usual adventures, I went overboard and used high grade sifters. If you're not like me, and I hope you aren't, then a regular old kitchen sifter will be just fine. This is another craft where the tighter knit the mesh, the better. Your goal is to make the pigment as fine as flour. Now then, when you get your materials, make sure to completely dry everything out. You want dust here, not goo. Speaking of dust, you're gonna wanna wear a mask. A good one. I didn't use one at first. I know, rookie mistake. And then, I didn't use the best one, and I wish I had. I was finding the stuff in my nose and even my ears after it was all over. Perhaps next time I will wear headphones or something to cover my ears too. You can even see some of the dust flying out while I sifted. It was a mess! As I said before, I went overboard. I ended up with 23 different pigments. Several were from rocks, I had clams, a big old white seashell, and even a maroon seashell that gave me this slightly pinkish color. I got a pretty dark black from some burn up tree, but most of them were from different colored clays and dirts that I found. I found that once you start grinding, if you put some TV on, you can get into a rhythm and it's not tedious. One night I ground up pigments for about eight hours or so. As you can guess, I went to bed pretty late. Also, that's kind of ridiculous, don't do that. As usual, I'm throwing a new set of materials at you mid-video. These are for the paint making process, and I'm gonna talk about them completely out of order. The solution that makes the watercolor paint is a mixture of water, clove oil, honey, and gum arabic, also known as arabic gum or acacia powder. The gum arabic is used to bind the pigment into paint form. The clove oil is used as a preservative, and the honey helps with both of the previous things. You can buy the gum arabic already in liquid form, or make your own. I made my own. Looking online, I found multiple recipes to mix all this stuff together. 
So naturally, I followed none of them and just kind of threw it in the pot until it looked like something that would work. You probably don't want to do that. A palette knife is a good life choice, but anything to begin the mixing process will do. You'll also need a muller and a slab of glass. The muller is a special tool used to thoroughly mix the pigment with the gum arabic solution. You can use a glass cutting board, but they also sell a muller slab of glass combo! Then I realized it would be cheaper to buy the muller separately and then buy or reuse a piece of glass that goes in a picture frame. So that's what I did. And finally, a scraper. I originally thought a cake frosting shaper thing would work, but something silicon ended up working better. Oh, and of course, don't forget your pigments. So put some pigment on your glass and dig a little hole in it. I think it looks like a little volcano. Then put some of your solution in it and start mixing. You'll see where I had to dig out some bigger pieces that made it through the sifting process. Take your time mixing. You want your pigment to be well bound to the gum arabic solution. After a while, it'll become kind of gooey. This is the goo you were looking for. Scoop it up and stick it in a watercolor pan. I wasn't sure if I mixed it all properly, so I let mine dry for several days. It was interesting. Some of the paints dried quickly and others took much longer. You'll be able to tell when they're dry. Then I did a color swatch. Look, it's paint! That's so cool! I'll do another video where I actually paint with them. Just a couple of final notes. You can do this process using an acrylic medium instead of the gum arabic solution to make, you guessed it, acrylic paint. And you can actually make paints out of harder rocks too. You would need more equipment than I had though, and a rock grinder can be kind of expensive. However, some of the colors that come from these harder rocks are absolutely stunning. Well, that's it for this one. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.